Welcome to evening prayer on this night of Trinity Sunday. We begin with our opening sentences. God who flung the stars into the night sky rejoices over all creation, especially us. Come to us, laughing God, and gladden our hearts with your goodness and grace. Christ, the word of joy and life, fills all creation with hope, especially us. Come to us, brother and savior, and reclaim our hearts as your own. The spirit who breathes life into emptiness gives all creation the gift of peace, especially us. Come to us, spirit of gentleness, and refresh us with the dew of delight. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen.
Our first reading tonight is the call of the prophet Isaiah, found in the sixth chapter, verses one through eight. We read from the prophets, we compose hymns based on the prophets' writings, we preach sermons about the prophets, and yet the reality is none of them ever really wanted to be prophets. In the year the king Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on the throne, high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him, each had six wings. With two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the threshold shook at the voices of those who called in the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me. Then our psalm for tonight is the 29th psalm, and here's a paraphrase. Pay attention now, all creation. Notice what God is doing all around for then you will want to sing God's joyous praises. There, in the wind in the trees, we hear God's whispers. There, in the thunder rolling across the night, we hear the booming laugh of God. There, in the water flooding swollen creeks, we hear God's words of justice rolling down. There, here, everywhere, the voice of God brings healing to the shattered. Everywhere, here, there. God's voice shelters the forgotten with hope. Our arrogance cracks at God's soft voice. We are pushed off our pride by God's singing. God has only to call and kids hop on bikes and go racing down the street after. Old folks hear God humming in their memories and know the words to that song. Like a lantern, we can find our way home in the shadows with God's voice. We hear God crying and can no longer remain silent in the face of injustice. God tells the same old story of joy and trees join hands to dance while all creation hollers, Alleluia. From those drops of water on our heads when we are baptized to the glass God holds to our souls when parched, grace is poured out upon us then, now, and in every moment. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen.
Next, we read from Paul's letter to the church in Rome as well as to us, reading from the great eighth chapter of that letter, one that has had influence on the church over the centuries. We're reading verses 12 through 17. So then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors not to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When, when we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if in fact we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. And then from John's gospel, a familiar story to many from the third chapter, verses 1 through 17. Now, there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, but for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, You must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can this be? Jesus answered him, <clears throat> Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen. <clears throat> Yet you do not receive our testimony. <clears throat> if I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the world, Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God stands forever. Amen. Then our reflection tonight is a reflection on Trinity Sunday. It's based on the first verse of Isaiah 6. In the year that King Isaiah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. We could see you high and lofty, or playing in the puddles with the muddy dog, we could call you Father or Creator or sing of you as the shawl of grace. We could look for you in the clouds of glory or find you babysitting all the forgotten around us. We could call you Son or Redeemer, but maybe you prefer ally of the mocked of our times. We could listen for that mighty rush of wind or hear you <clears throat> ringing the bells of hope. We could call you sustainer of all that lives or watch you be the defense attorney of the bullied.
I invite you to join me now in a few moments of prayer and let us gather up our thanksgivings and praises for all the wonders, the grace, the love, the hope we experience not only on this day, but in the past week as we reflect this evening on our lives, on our communities, on our world. And let us lift those up in prayer. We pray especially thanksgiving for all those communities of faith represented here in this gathering this night, for those people who witness to justice for the oppressed, caring for the forgotten, feeding the hungry, working for affordable housing, for those who sleep in their cars and on streets and sleep rough. We also offer up the prayers of thanksgiving for all that has happened in our lives in the quiet of these moments. And we pray for our world, our nations, our communities, our neighborhoods, the places where we work, worship, go to school, uh, live, we pray for those who are affected by weather events. We pray for those who are perpetrators and victims of violence everywhere. We pray for those continuing conflicts going on in places like the Ukraine, Israel, the occupied Palestinian territories, and other places throughout our world. We pray for Chris Willis, administrator and office manager in the East Midland Synod, as she pre prepares to undergo surgery this coming Wednesday. We pray for Elaine Dray, secretary of the former Ermine URC, as she waits surgery. For June Pevy, for Graham Galeb, as he continues to recover from his surgery. We pray for the Reverend Caroline Andrews. For Roger Allen and for the Reverend Ruth Allen in her care and concern for him. We pray with Allison for her parents, Reverend Brian Russell and Dorothy Russell. For Barbara Turner of Holly Moorside URC as she awaits surgery. We also pray for the Reverend Helen Wakefield Carr and her ongoing treatment for cancer. For the Reverend Liz Adams, as well as for the Reverend Hamish Temple for recovery from surgery. We pray for the Reverend, for Jean Schink and for the Reverend Brian Schink and his ongoing care for her. For the Reverend Graham and Vera Masquerie. For Re Father Andy, Monius Parish Priest. We pray with Akatea this night for her friend Bea. We pray with the Reverend Claire and Reverend Brian Davison for their daughter Susie. And we pray for Cheryl and for Prince and the family and their ongoing care for her. And we pray especially for Cheryl as she is now in palliative, palliative care. And pray for the family as they journey with her in these days. We pray with Andy for Mike, his dad, and as well as for Liz and Ruth and their continuing care for Mike. We pray for John as well as for Irene as she continues to look after him. We pray for Margaret Davis, uh, Secretary of the former URC Rose Hill, who's doing very poorly. And we pray for the members of the royal family for recovery from illness and for good health and for the hope that they offer to those who are also going through cancer treatments and the reminder to everyone that they do not journey alone. They should find hope. And we pray for all those who grieve, especially for Allison's sister, Carolyn, on the death of Carolyn's husband, Steve, and also with Allison's husband, Paul, and his dad, Roy, and all the family on the death of Paul's mom, Pat. We pray for those who grieve for Don Buxton, especially the Reverend Maureen Buxton, for all who grieve for Bishop Alan Wilson, especially his wife, Lucy, and the family. And we lift up all those who grieve for Pat, loved ones, and we pray for 
those concerns, those needs, those hopes that we carry in our hearts, O oh God, and can only speak to you. You bind us to yourself this night, God of seraphim and sinners. You reach out to draw us ever closer that we might feel the brush of your grace soft upon us, that we might feel the healing touch of your compassion resting gently within us. You bind us to yourself this night, air of glory and grace. You keep us by your side that we might walk with you through the streets of the kingdom, bringing hope to the despairing, offering consolation to the brokenhearted, sharing love with those tossed aside by the world. You bind us to yourself this night, spirit of justice. You fill our hearts with living water that they might overflow to parched people. You teach us to give ourselves away so we might take on the burdens of others. We bind ourselves to you this night, God in community, holy and one. Even as we pray the words Jesus taught us using our own words, language, and tradition. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. In peace we will lie down and sleep. For you alone, Lord, make us dwell in safety. And now may the peace of the rolling waves, the peace of the silent mountains, the peace of the singing stars, and the deep, deep peace of the Prince of Peace be with you all now and forevermore. Amen. And may you rest in God's grace, hope, and love this night, my friends. <laughs>